नमस्ते वेलकम बैक टू आर एपिसोड न्यू एपिसोड इन द प्रीवियस एपिसोड 17 चिदाकाशम 17 आई इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू द बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक्स ओके ऑफ फॉर वेलनेस गुडनेस एंड हैप्पीनेस व्हिच वी इन्फर्ड फ्रॉम आवर इयरलियर एपिसोड्स वेयर वी सॉ how the macrocosm gets reflected in the microcosm and that's where we are building now i <coughs> gave a list of items and then i left some details like panchabhuta i told what are the panchabhuta orally okay and many of you may not have noticed it or noted it okay uh, so i am using this as a small episode okay as a bridge for you to see the details i'm giving you a complete enumeration of all these in you know, what it says 5 i want to show you all the 5 okay so we will see that okay so this is what uh, we saw uh, in the previous episode building blocks panchabhuta pancha tanmatra dasha prana five sense organs five action organs which is gnanendriya and karmendriya manas and buddhi given which can evolve into medha which is intuition and pragna is consciousness okay so manas and buddhi mind and intellect can evolve into medha and pragna and then there's an aham sense of i that i exist okay and then gun triguna okay now these are the things that we saw as the building blocks and we also said for the time being we will not worry about aham i sense of i for wellness sake but future when we go to uh, spiritual side of the discussion we, that becomes very important that becomes a core okay now let's see the list <clears throat> so hey you can see the list right पंचभूता अर्थ पांच भूत पंचभूत आकाश वायु अग्नि अपु पृथ्वी आकाश स्पेस वायु इज द मूविंग फोर्स कॉल्ड एयर दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी लूज टर्म वेरी कंफ्यूजिंग टर्म बट इट्स अ मूविंग फोर्स अग्नि इज फायर एंड तेजस व्हिच इज अ फायर एंड सॉरी अग्नि इज आल्सो तेजस अग्नि एंड तेजस गो टुगेदर व्हिच इज फायर एंड लाइट अपु इज वाटर एंड पृथ्वी इज अर्थ these are mahabhuta uh, some people make a differentiation between bhuta and mahabhuta okay panch panch bhut and panch mahabhut essentially they are the same when they look at panch they refer to panch bhut they refer to its existence in human beings and other beings entities smaller things the anda pinda whatever okay but mahabhut means one that is brahman but both are same okay then there is the tanmatra that we talk about tanmatra is subtler versions of bhut tan matra very light tan matra okay and you, you can see it as a subtler version of this or a building block of this different schools treat it differently okay but they have their own existence we will see how it reflects into our uh, later discussions so they are shabd roop gandh ras sparsh shabd roop gand ras sparsh shabd means sound roop means form gand means smell ras means taste sparsh means touch and these are associated with these panch bhut okay like this sound is associated with space form is associated with fire and light smell is associated with earth taste is associated with water touch is associated with air okay very simple only when there is air movement you can feel the touch only if there is a water element your tongue can taste okay and the sound has to travel uh, in space and only when there is light you can see any form and yet gives smell okay that's a difficult thing to understand the last one we'll see later so understand it like this for the time being we, there are nuances which we will see later okay now we get into dasha dasha prana okay the dasha prana is prana apana vyana udana samana so sir the 
So prana is normally associated with inhaling and exhaling of air. Okay, breathing. Okay. Apana is normally associated with evacuation and rejection of waste. That means sending out downward motion. Okay, prana is breathing, inhale, exhale. Apana is sending out waste. Vyana is circulation of blood and nourishment. This is about circulation. Okay, whatever your food is digested as you go through the blood, and that motion, uh, that moving force is Vyana. Udana is reverse process of Apana. Apana ka reverse process, which means vomiting, etc. Okay, burping, all that. Samana is digestion and assimilation of food. Now, this is how Prana moves to support the various systems. Okay. But that doesn't mean that prana is only doing this. Prana means basically life force, life giving force, life supporting force. Okay, so it's there doing many functions. But these are five major functions that we understand for the purposes of wellness and so on and so forth. The upa prana, which becomes important only when you get into very advanced stages of your understanding of prana, is naga, urma, devadatta, kirkala, and dhananjaya. Naga is does the function for burping. It moves something as burping. Okay, kurma is blinking the eyelids. Devadatta, okay, is yawning. Kirkala is sneezing, and Dhananjaya is pumping of the heart valves. Okay, so they do the functions to create movements. So the prana basically is a moving force. Okay, we will see a lot more about prana in detail later. Indriyas Indriyas are basically organs which are dealing with external world okay? not the internal body things but external world seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touch okay? they are not eyes, ears etc eyes and ears are supposed to be of Panchabhuta okay? so they are a bit more gross but the function that operates through the eyes, which is called seeing, is called Yanendriya. The function that operates through the ears as hearing is a Yanendriya. The function that operates through the nose for smelling is a Yanendriya. The function that operates through the tongue for tasting, therefore tasting is a Yanendriya. And sparsh, touch, feel. So seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touch. These are the only five ways in which you can sense the external world. There is no other way. Now what you make up in your mind is a processed form of what you have perceived. But if you have to perceive the world from, with this body, these are the only five ways that you can do. Point to think. Take a pause and think. Similarly, Karmendriya, the way you can act with the ex external world, you can create something outside. Okay, You can make some changes outside. Speech, hands, legs, anus and genitals. Speech is for speaking, hands for grasping, moving etc. Legs is for mobility of the body, anus is for waste removal okay. and genitals is for procreation. Again, these are things to ponder, you can sit through and examine whether there is any other way you can do anything outside. Nothing else, this is the only phase you can do. Right. So, Jnanendriya and Karmendriya are subtler versions, not the body aspects, but how the hands functions, how the legs functions actually, how the anus, what happens with the anus. Actually, this is the way you must see. Okay. So, these are the 10 Indriyas, incoming, outgoing. So, you can roughly see it as sensors and actuators. If you are an electronic engineer, you will know. How do you sense? How do you actuate? If you are a medical person, you will say sense organs, motor action, motor organs. Okay. okay, that's a way to look at it. The other one is manas, which is mind, buddhi is intellect, and with proper yogic exercises and way of living, the buddhi can move into medha, which is intuition, and even super intuition. Medha is not just ordinary intuition, it's super intuition. Pragna is a build up on medha, 
May the mind itself gets transformed into prajna, which is super consciousness. But super consciousness also has to do with the other parts of the body. Okay. We'll see later. But this is an important aspect. Aham is sense of I. Aham is sense of I. When I say I exist, that sense of I existing is called Aham. Aham is I. And then Trigun. Okay. Trigun we said is when originally from the singularity or the big bang which was otherwise quiet and quiet is called non-action there is nothing, nothing happening there right? the non-action is called sattva that is called sattva guna okay? but when it starts acting that becomes rajas so non-action becomes action and then there is rest okay? or withdrawal okay? withdrawal, inaction that is called tamas so these are the three modes in which the original source operates. It was quiet for a long time, then it acted, then after a long time again it will collapse. So from a big bang point of view, we can say Sattva is singularity without expansion, Rajas is cosmic expansion, Tamas is cosmic collapse. Okay. The same thing applies to us. When you are sitting doing nothing that is called non-action sakshi bhava or witness as we say rajas is external action tamas is rest relaxation so on and so forth it's a huge list there's a topic for two episodes which you will see soon now while you act there is something called mishra so it's it's always in a it, together it works together in the sthiti state in the sustenance state beyond if you leave creation and samhara, okay, it's only Mishra state, it has all the three. Okay. And that is called, there are two other things in that called Rajasik Sattva and sat Sattvic Rajas. Again, when we discuss Gun in detail, we will discuss all that. Okay. So this is the list. So I will show you the list. You can see that. Hope you can see that in detail. Okay, I'll slowly move it. Come back to this. So what we also said was that if you have to further shortlist these building blocks, okay, Tanmatra is basically a variant of Bhuta, subtler version. So we said these two are to be seen together. So I am going to remove this for the time being. Okay, Pran has a standing entity. The Pran working on the Bhuta creates Indriya, Manas. And Aham. Okay, Aham again. I said you see when you see the spiritual stuff. I remove this. Okay. Indriya and Buddhi is basically a derivative of Pran working on Bhuta. Okay. Again, I remove it. So the final short list. Of the building block okay. or only these three so you will find that uh, there are schools which only build the whole philosophy practice on this 
Some of them do it only on Bhuta and Prana, not even Guna. Okay. Some people build on Bhuta and Guna. They take Prana a little implicit. Okay. They, for example, Vedanta looks at Guna in a big way, whereas uh, Yoga, Yoga Darshan, looks at Prana in a big way. But Bhuta is fundamental. I think nobody is, no Indian school of thought uh, can do anything without discussing Pancha Bhuta. Okay, rest is all maybe you can you can stress on one, not stress on the other. There could be mechanisms, technologies which are built on one. Okay, not built on other. The yoga builds a complete technology based on prana for practice, for wellness, goodness, happiness, as well as for spiritual evolution. Okay. The Vedanta philosophy, okay, speaks less about prana. They normally don't talk about prana too much. Okay. They only look at guna. Okay. They look at sattva guna, rajas guna, and how to improve the sattva in your in your being. Okay. So they emphasize on guna as a primary means to, to have that. But when you are looking at wellness, you have to take care of pran. Without pran, you cannot look at wellness. When you look at goodness, you have to look at guna. Okay. So when you look at wellness, goodness, and happiness, we have to look at panchabhut, pran. Panchaprana, not the yes, Upa Pranas and the Guna, Triguna. Okay. These three have to be discussed in great detail and understood and the practices that happen around that for wellness and goodness. And when wellness and goodness is taken care, happiness is taken care. Okay. So that's the, the, let me say, the add-on to the previous episode. I'll stop here and then we'll get on to some very, very interesting stuff I got for you which may run for another two, three episodes. I will record it today. Yeah. See you.